Greetings world. We are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. Despite average apartment rents in Calgary rising at nearly three times the rate of inflation, the Premier will not limit how much Alberta landlords can hike rents. There are no controls on the amount of rent increases in Alberta. Rent can only be increased if there has not been a rent increase within the previous 365 days or since the start of the tenancy, whichever is later. Before the rent can be increased the landlord must give three months written notice. But tenants have recently struggled to find safe, affordable, rental accommodation in Calgary said the government needs to introduce legislation to limit rent hikes. The landlord can charge a non-refundable pet fee and the security deposit. The non-refundable fee does not form part of the security deposit. The landlord can only charge a fee that is reasonable and is a genuine expectation of damages that will occur. But many of us have seen that pet deposits well over exceed the rent, or at least be half of the rent. This is ridiculous because it is a pet, meaning a dog, cat, or something in a cage. It is not a wild animal therefore it will not make the most damage. And in that case the landlords are just money hungry because some humans make more damage during a long period of time than almost any pet would. The NDP government won't introduce rent controls, and instead focuses on building more affordable housing units. Bill 202 that was passed is called the Alberta Affordable Housing Review Committee Act. The government will establish a committee of no fewer than three members to report on five areas. Four of the five areas listed in the bill for committee review are about tenancy rent regulation, rent subsidies, security deposits and the affordability of rental rates. The fifth is about the affordability of home ownership. Given the context of this bill, housing affordability is really about subsidized housing only. There is a vast literature which shows that rent controls are associated with a decrease in the supply of rental units and even an increase in prices. Tenants in price controlled units often stay where they are, regardless of their family size, which leads to inefficient use of space. When new rental units become available which are not yet price controlled, the asking price is typically higher than they otherwise would be. Due to limited supply and landlords fears of being unable to raise the rent in the future. Because rent controls restrict the rent, landlords also have fewer resources or less incentive to invest in maintenance, and the quality of rental housing deteriorates. Therefore, rent controls can lower the quantity and quality of rental units. This is clearly not an outcome envisioned or contemplated by this legislation. There are several aspects of the subsidized housing issue that require much deliberation. The first major issue is whether we want to provide subsidized housing. If so, should it be subsidized by taxpayers more generally or by landlords or both? There may be strong public support for spending taxpayer dollars on subsidized housing. However, we also have to decide who is eligible for this subsidized housing, the wait times, and if the ones that don't need subsidized housing will actually get it because this is something that happens all the time. Most provinces and even most parts of America have rent control except Alberta. In Canada it is called the Residential Tenancies Act from 2006. Thes major guideline for this is that no landlord may increase the rent charged to a tenant or to an assignee during the term of their tenancy by more than the guideline. So how come Alberta doesn't have any rent control? We as citizens can be paying over $4,000 just to move into a rental property. This means the first month's rent, plus the damage deposit equal to the rent, and an insane amount for a pet deposit if you own one or more.
Landlords just want to take advantage of you and not even maintain their property during the whole tenancy, and then feel the need to raise the rent at any time they want. And especially with Alberta being so big and people flocking here for the work. Why don't we have rental controls in place to stop such a thing? The economic impact of rent control regulations has been disputed. Some economists consider rent controls, like other price ceilings, to be market distortions that discourage the construction of more homes by limiting the profits owners can earn from them. By discouraging the construction of new housing stock, regulators may create the same housing shortage they sought to prevent by enacting the legislation in the first place. Others believe rent control is a viable method of ensuring affordable housing for renters that prevents landlords from capriciously raising prices. We are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.